Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm super excited to review The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. And I've really been looking forward to this film for a long time, and I'm sure Terry Gilliam has too. He's been working on this film on and off since 1989, and this film finally gets made, finally gets a somewhat of a release through Fathom Events this past week on Wednesday, and I got to go see it. And I enjoyed it a lot. This isn't the this isn't a perfect film, and honestly, he hasn't made a film that I've downright loved it since probably the early 90s. But the thing is, finally getting to see this film, there's so many things to like about it. Adam Driver's fantastic in the leading role here as this cocky, pretentious director who's so self-absorbed, and through all of these crazy mishaps and adventures with a man who believes he is Don Quixote, he finally gets to grow and really develop the ideas of chivalry. And that's really what this whole entire film is based around, and these ideas and where they can really fit in into modern times and how we should feel about other people. And I thought it was really impressive how well those themes are portrayed throughout the film and how they're fleshed out. This film definitely keeps you on your toes. It's all over the place. It's a crazy, wonkers adventure. But Adam Driver's that anchor there who's keeping us with our feet on the ground for the most part, as long as he can tell his feet are on the ground. That's one of the fun parts about the film. What's real? What's not? And those are always a big ideas that are in Terry Gilliam films. Is like, what's actually going on here that's real? And what's not real? And then Jonathan Price hams it up as Don Quixote in this film, this villager who really thinks he is Don Quixote. And he has so much fun, you can tell, and he's living it up. And one of the most memorable performances of the year so far, at least for me. And he really brings a lot to this character, anguish and pain and love and fun. He's kind of an ass. He's really funny. He's has all these really strong beliefs, and everything is conveyed to the max by Jonathan Wright, um, Price's performance. Now, the, from the first frame of this film, it, how it was shot with the cinematography, the lighting, everything, the film looks so much like Monty Python and the Holy Grail, I'm like, getting back to old school Gilliam right here, and I was super excited, and it's a beautifully shot film, there's some special effects in it that overall work pretty well. There's one particular scene in this movie that has some sh um, disturbing and odd effects in it that kind of take me aback. But overall, the production of this and how it's shot is so beautiful and really fleshes out this world and blending this modern time with these ideas of like, old times of knights and chivalry and really melting those things together with the whole idea of reality and dream and what's really happening and what's not really happening. Story-wise, there's not a whole lot of plot. There's not a strong central drive to the film besides honestly just going on this kind of quest for honor. And is there a real point to it for most of the film? That winds up coming along throughout the film, but honestly, it does meander, it goes around, and it does lose you a little bit. It can be long in the tooth at times. But overall, Terry Gilliam brings so much energy into this as a director, and so much flair, that it does keep you engrossed for a lot of those times where otherwise this film might not really have worked because it could have lost you for a decent amount of it. The thing is, Terry Gilliam films are not for everybody. You have to really suspend your disbelief and really let yourself go into this wonky craziness. But if you do, I think you'll rather enjoy this film quite a bit. If it's really not for you and you're not ready to just go on some crazy trip, honestly, it might not be for you. It deals with a lot of magical realism, but in the end I feel like there's a lot to this film that's really enjoyable and makes it worth the two hours and 15 minutes that you sit through it. And the music is beautiful, how it's shot is beautiful, the acting really carries this through, and you really enjoy the time that you spend with these characters. I had a 
I had a ball with it. And I highly recommend this film. I hope that they release it further besides this one-time Fathom event so it gets an actual release for people. I'll keep an eye on that and hopefully spread the word to people once it does because, you know, I'm always checking to see what's getting released. But if you've seen it and you got to enjoy that Fathom event like I did, comment, let me know what you think. And thank you as always for supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.